All right, let's review a little bit about Green's theorem. So let f be a vector field in two dimensions, and let's denote its components by p and q. Okay, so we see in the following. So first of all, f is conservative if and only if the integral over c of f dot dr equals zero for all closed curves c in the domain in which f is defined. Uh, second, we've seen that if f is conservative, then um, dq dx equals dp dy. I guess I also need to say if f is conservative and differentiable. Um, otherwise, you don't, these derivatives aren't defined. And that follows by Clairaut's theorem. And third, we saw Green's theorem. which says that if C is a simple closed curve in the plane, and R is the region it bounds, then if you take the integral over C with the positive orientation of f dot dr, then this is the double integral over the region R um, of um, d, d q dx minus dp dy with respect to area. And this is assuming that f is differentiable and defined on the entire region R, so that this integral makes sense. Okay, so that's, so that's Green's theorem. And then, putting all those facts together, we saw that if F is defined on a simply connected domain, and um, dq dx equals dp dy, then um, f is conservative. So we know that if f is conservative, then dq dx equals dp dy, and that's true no matter what the domain is. And if you want to go the other way, you can't always do that, but you can always do that if the domain is simply connected. Okay, so Green's theorem was really useful for proving that, you know, because if dq dx equals dp dy, then this integral is zero, right? Okay, but in general, what is the what is the um, idea of Green's theorem? What does it mean? So let's um, draw on a new page. So what is the idea or interpretation? of this equation, integral over c of f dot dr equals double integral over r of dq dx minus dp dy. Okay, so here's our, here's our curve c, and here's our region r. So the integral over c of f dot dr you can, well, it's the work done by f as you go around c, and you can also think of it as um, sort of, I mean, if the vector field looks like this, say, here's an example where it's positive. It sort of measures the amount that the vector field is flowing around c, or circulating around c. So this thing is, you think of as circulation 
of f around c. And so that's in, equal to an integral over all of r. And what is this? So the idea is that this measures the local rotation of the vector field. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So for example, suppose f is minus y comma x. So here um, p is equal to minus y and q is equal to x. So that tells us that dq dx minus dp dy equals 2. So this is a vector field with sort of a positive rotation. Like if I, if I take a little square, say around the origin, okay, so here's the origin, then on the right side of the square, um, so the, um, it, it's going, it, 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 x is positive, so the vertical component is positive. Okay? So here it's going like this. It's turning a little bit as you go over here. But in any case, it's, it's, um, it's going upwards on the right side of the square. On the left side of the square, it's going downwards like this. On the top of the square, it's going to the left, because here the p, the first component of f, is minus y. So when y is positive, this is negative, so it looks like this. The bottom is going to the right. So you can see it's sort of rotating in this little square. So in general, this dq dx minus p to y is some measure of some kind of local rotation of the vector field. And then when you add up that local rotation over the whole region r, you get the sort of total circulation around the boundary of the region R. So that's the rough idea. Um, if you didn't, if that didn't really speak to you, that's okay. But this is just some sort of intuition to keep in mind as we're now going to generalize the whole story to three dimensions.